everyone. Welcome to Sports This Morning. I'm Cecilia Amogbe. I am Taya Salah. Many thanks for joining us again. All right, this is what the show looks like. We're starting off with Nigeria's representatives. That's at the Basketball Africa League, the inaugural edition. River Supers, they're set to depart Lagos for the competition that is going to start on May the 16th. Yes, they will be leaving this afternoon for the tournament. Also on the program, Inter Milan fans and players are still celebrating the Scudetto. It's the first time they are winning at the Scudetto since 2010. Ten. That's a okay. long time. Long That's time about ago. 11 years. Uh, now, of course, celebrations are in the blue side <laughs> of Milan. It must be said because there's AC Milan uh, uh, there as well too. But for, for Inter Milan fans, celebrations are since yesterday continued into the night and this morning as well. We'll be talking about that later on the show. Still on spot this morning in the NBA, the box and the Nets faced off. And it was Yanis at Tetokounmpo and the box prevailing over Kevin Durant and the Brooklyn Nets. It was a very, very tight game, very, very competitive and exciting game. By the end of four quarters, it was the Bucs winning that game 117 to 140. Matters of former MVPs. You can okay, say Rainy MVP Rainy. for my MVP. <laughs> again, they're starting off with the NBA this morning. The results first before we look at our star match for the night. That's mm -hmm. the, the box and the Nets. Results from last night starting off with uh, eight, eight games played. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the Nets and the box. Starting, starting with, with the Nets and the box. Of course, you heard the results already. 117 to 114. We'll come back uh, to that uh, uh, for proper analysis. Uh, in a bit. Elsewhere, it was the Blazers against the Celtics. It was Portland prevailing 129 to 119. CJ McCollum was the star of the show in that game. Portland have now won <laughs> four straight games. Mm -hmm. The Heat defeated the Charlotte Hornets 121 to 111. Um, Bama Debayo, 20 points and 10 rebounds on the night. Uh, for Miami, they're now sixth in the Eastern Conference. So they're looking very good uh, for the, the post-season. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on to the... Okay. the Kings and the Mavs. The Kings and the Mavs. I don't know what's wrong with the Mavs. Uh, <laughs> against the Kings, uh, we thought it uh, should be a uh, fairly straightforward victory for Dallas, uh, but it wasn't to be because uh, Buddy Hill uh, uh, was in fantastic form, scored 27 points uh, for Sacramento in their 111 to 99 victory over Dallas. They've swept Dallas for the season. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. It seemed like the it's Kings sweeping the Dallas. The Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not what you would expect. Uh, Same Dallas sweeping the Lakers as some of the big teams. Exactly. All right. Let's get on to uh, the Knicks and the Rockets. Uh, New York winning 122 to 97 over Houston. Julius Randle, 31 points mm -hmm. in three, three quarters. quarters. What a season this guy is having. Very, very happy for him. And uh, he's about to lead the Knicks into the playoffs again, barring... I don't think anything is going to happen. The Nothing's going to stop that. Yeah, they yeah, will so make the playoffs, yeah, right? So it depends playoffs. on what they can achieve in the playoffs. In the playoffs, that's what matters. Uh, that's another question, another situation entirely. Uh, for the Rockets, though, terrible, terrible season continues. Seventh loss in eight games. Uh, they have the NBA worst record, of course. 16 mm. wins and 49 losses. Yeah, 16 <laughs> wins this season. When... You, when um, when James, James Harden was Harden. leading and the blockbuster trade, yeah. and you were thinking, okay, fine, he's going to leave, but that wouldn't make the Lake, uh, the uh, Rockets to crumble. It's, right now, that's they what just done. crumble. Like they've, they've, they're, grounded. They're, grounded. they're grounded. They're not so going they're anywhere. anywhere. So they can go anywhere. <laughs> I mean, uh, hopefully, uh, our fans in Houston can really appreciate uh, what... Uh, James Harden no, they, they, for the franchise. They did, they because did. you remember when he lot. came to the Rockets, when he came, I mean, from net, when the Brooklyn, when the Rockets hosted Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, they, I mean, it was course, yeah. the rousing, resounding welcome it was given. So, it's much appreciated. Uh, it's uh, just the way he left, which they didn't like, but he did a whole lot for the team and they okay. know that, yes, he was the one actually carrying this team. He was, so, clearly. Clearly. clearly yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let me rephrase what I was going to say. I hope the Rockets fans now they understand why he had to leave. Why he had to leave. Okay. I mean, it's not getting any young guys yeah, trying cool. to win a ring. And he all needs of to that. win a so, ring. Anyways, uh, bad side days uh, for Houston. Uh, the OKC Thunder as well to win mm -hmm. action against the Suns. Uh, yeah. uh, after nice scandalously time. losing uh, on Saturday, <laughs> they bounced back by 50. What? That's 57. Ridiculous. Bucks. Home loss. Worst in, <laughs> in, in franchise <laughs> history. history. Uh, but they bounced back. They tried to bounce back against yeah. Phoenix. Uh, they lost mm, by just, uh, three, just three points. points. Yeah, that's uh, Devin uh, Booker, 20, uh, 32 on the night. Yeah, for Devin Booker. Yeah. The Suns, of course, are still... Uh, sun is still shining. 
uh, in Phoenix, uh, the 76ers defeated the San Antonio Sports 113 to 111. Joel B with 34 mm -hmm. points and 12 rebounds. And last game but, with 30 more. Yeah, so it's had a fantastic season yeah. as well. So apart from the injury blip, uh, you know, mid-season, um, you know, would have been a front runner for the MVP. Yeah. But that's not what matters right now. Uh, let's last but not the least, the Lakers Raptors. <laughs> Sorry? Okay, yeah. Lakers and the Raptors, yeah? Yeah, Lakers and the Raptors ended 121 to 114. Yet another loss uh, for the LA Lakers will come back to that game shortly as well. Let's focus quickly on the Nets and the box. Cecilia, what a game. Just the three points uh, three difference points uh, between uh, these two sides. Uh, these two sides that are actually competing to be... Um, Perhaps number one in the East as well, too, because it's not much uh, gap between uh, between them. But on the night, it was uh, Yanis uh, facing off against uh, KD. Uh, Cecilia, I have to tell you, uh, it was quite the battle. It, it I, was. I've actually missed uh, two superstars going head, head to, to head, head. shootout between them. I've missed that in the NBA for a while now. So it was good to see uh, these two guys, uh, you know, going head to head. Uh, but for Yanis. He prevailed at the end of the day, 49, 49 points. 49 points, yeah, that's what As someone had. coming back from injury, mm. it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I mean, you just wonder if these guys are human, and that's why they keep saying we need to test them for that's the alien call him DNA. The so, yeah, call him the freak. Yeah. And then for the Durant, he had 40, 42 on the ninth mm. and 10 rebounds. But Yanis just had the better one. Of course. And of course, yeah, Chris Midditi also contributing 26 points and 11 rebounds. I think that's actually key for the box. If if, if it was just Yanis at Kumbo that had all the points on the line, Mm -hmm. having support from the other guys I think would have been a loss for them but for Chris Middleton contributing that that usually was an advantage for it let's uh, get a post game reaction starting with uh, Yanis Atetokounmpo what it was like beating the Nets um, felt good um, obviously I stepped on uh, Kelly Olenek foot and uh, the moment uh, you know I was in a lot of pain um, but you know as a um, my personality, not how I am, you know, they, 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 in order for you to, like, you know, grow as a player, grow as a person, and, uh, you know, grow your toughness, you guys sometimes you got to play through pain. And uh, if it was, you know, up to my hand, you know, I could still play the game, keep going. I still had adrenaline, you know. Uh, even though I could not step on it at all uh, the first time. But, uh, you know, the team wanted me to, you know, take a break, get, uh, you know, healthy and don't have something that's going to keep lingering and lingering and lingering. Um, so that's why we decided, you know, not to go. But uh, today I felt good. Could not speed up as uh, much as I would want to, but uh, I was able to, you know, I had balance. Um, you know, I was able to get to my spots and uh, I did not feel as much pain. Oh, shoot and streak. I mean, you gotta give them credit. They're a long athletic team, but I think for the most part, a lot of our turnovers were self-inflicted, and uh, they got uh, they got them out of transition. Uh, they had confidence shooting the ball tonight. You gotta give them some respect. Uh, uh, coming out shooting the ball the way they did, that they did, they got you know we we made it easier for them by giving them turnovers. I'm just excited I get a chance to play uh, after you know being out for so long with injuries. So. Uh, any game, you know, especially games where it come down to the wire, uh, it's been, I've been super excited just to be a part of those. And tonight was one of those nights. Just reactions there from these two superstars. Uh, mm. Battle of the East. Yeah, Great. Battle of the East indeed. Uh, uh, 42 points and 10 rebounds uh, for uh, KD, but missed uh, a shot at the buzzer that mm -hmm. could have, could have, you know, tied uh, the game. And then it goes uh, into overtime. Overtime, yeah, it wasn't meant it to happens. be. It uh, happens. But it's just great to see KD and uh, and Yanis uh, as well to. Uh, playing well. Fit and ready. This is what I want to see in the playoffs. Mm. Yeah. Hopefully no injuries because uh, they've had to do, deal with a lot, lots of injuries and lots of injuries uh, this season. And the next uh, thing we're about to talk about, the next guy we're about to talk about, uh, the king himself, uh, LeBron he is James. Back. He returns on Friday. Yes, he's back, but things are not going according to plan. Uh, the Lakers are still sliding. Uh, they were in action as well too against uh, the Toronto Raptors uh, our team. Uh, you'd say uh, are not uh, in the best mm -hmm. moments, uh, but 
27 38. Lakers are on 36 28. That's 36 wins, 28 loss for the Raptors. 27 wins this season. But they were still able so, to beat the Lakers. That, that's yeah, that's the point. That's why I needed to point you. out how mm. I mean how low they are. Mm. I could say lowly Raptors. Raptors, right? yeah, you could say that. Mm. Uh, definitely. Uh, another disappointing loss. Yeah, it was for uh, the Lakers. You know, Sixth in seven games. Uh, not good at all. Things not looking good uh, for LA. And, um, you know, we thought uh, LeBron coming back, AD coming back as well to uh, world, you know, change. Cannot, yeah. You know, uh, Rex arrest, uh, arrest the, the slum they've been on, but yeah. it just didn't happen. LeBron was on court for 28 minutes. Had, had to leave as well, too. 19 points, of course, he went back into, and like, yeah. I think there's some, some injury there. Yeah, there's, there, there's trouble. There's them. trouble in, in Tinsel Town. And, um,. It's not a lot of time left uh, before the postseason. It's so not you, time, yeah. Uh, you wonder uh, how they're going to resolve this situation uh, right now. But that's what it is, and they will have to figure it out. Uh, LeBron James and uh, Anthony Davis are uh, having reacting to that loss against the Toronto Raptors. It, was, um, it feels really good. I'm obviously warming up for the game. You know, got, you know everything is going well. Um, you know, in the last two games, the halftime, you know, after the break, you know, it's kind of you know, gotten a little sore on me, um, a little tight. Um, and, um, you know, obviously coach decided not to, you know, uh, put me back in towards the end uh, because of that. So, uh, you know, that's pretty much it. My legs are starting to feel uh, pretty good. Um, still trying to get that, that game, um, that game win back. Uh, you know, each game I'm boosting the minutes up more and more to, to try to, you know, get that back as quickly as possible, but um, trying to get a rhythm. All right, Anthony Davis uh, for uh, the LA Lakers uh, last night uh, against the Toronto Raptors just at 12 points. Uh, that's another player that is still struggling and still trying to find his rhythm, like I said uh, in that clip. And same goes for LeBron James as mm -hmm. well, too. Um well, yeah, I think, I think with time, because they need to arrest this. If you look at time. their position right now, they assist in the Western Conference. They, they, we're talking about Lakers, any champion. They're just they're sliding, sliding. sliding. And Last they, time we talked about they were fifth. Now exactly. they assist. So, Let's not think about the unthinkable. So mm -hmm. we'll leave it at that. I mean, the worst, the worst that can happen to them <laughs> is, is to uh, slide, uh, slide out so of an automatic uh, 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 playoff or contention and do the playing. Playing. Okay. Which is, we're, we're, not, we're not thinking about exactly. that. Even okay. the Warriors, so, as bad as they are this season, they're not thinking of playing in the play-in tournament. Yeah, well, it so is what about it is. That's where they are. Lakers you with are AG where you and are. James. <laughs> you know, so. All right, let's take a look at the guys who put up some big numbers on the night. Yes. A, a whole lot of big numbers, right? Loads Ask of them. Siakam, all on 13, the winning side as well. All on the winning side. I like that. Uh, <laughs> it's always beautiful when it happens like that. We'll start with Pascal Siakam if we have yes. him. 39, 13, and 4. Yes, mm -hmm. he was instrumental in that loss. Uh, in that, uh, I yeah, mean, Lakers assist uh, Lakers. loss in seven games over the Lakers. Yeah. Mm. So move on to the next one, Joel Embiid. Joel was very fantastic mm -hmm. as well too. Uh, like I said, uh, if it wasn't for the injury, it would be, you know, front runner for the MVP for the regular season. 34, 12 and 1 on the night for the Sound Sixers. And Devin Booker for the Suns, the next. Okay, Yanis before him. 49, 8, <laughs> and 4. The Greek freak. As you see, like, it was so good last night. 21 <laughs> for down. 36 from the, <laughs> from field, the field, including 4 for 8 from 3 points range. Which is really so, not too good at. Which yeah. is exactly. So when <laughs> Giannis starts to make 3 points, Threes. then you're in trouble. You ask some questions. <laughs> in trouble. CJ McCollum also. CJ McCollum <laughs> for the Portland Trail Blazers. Yeah. Uh, 33, 5, and 5 uh, in their own victory as well against the Celtics. Next up is Devin Booker, of course, for the Suns, 32-3 and 6. And I don't know why KD is not here. Okay, we know he had 42 on the night. Yeah. Put that there. This is winner's circle, winner's <laughs> lists. Yeah. Anyone that, that actually stay in it. Exactly. Julius Randle for the New York Knicks carrying the team, 31-7 and 6. We leave the NBA staying with basketball. On, uh, we're, we're coming back the Basketball Africa League. Yes. Exciting times. Um... I'm very excited because mm -hmm. uh, Rufus Hoopers, they are ready. They are set uh, to depart uh, uh, Lagos uh, for Kigali, where they'll be taking part in the inaugural edition of the Basketball African League, of course, uh, uh, being staged uh, by the NBA and FIBA. 
And the players have been in Lagos practicing and training, and uh, uh, we caught up with uh, a couple of them, uh, one very familiar face, and the other not so familiar. <laughs> and they've been talking about um, uh, them looking forward to the competition, what, uh, what their hopes and aspirations are, and uh, uh, in general, what to expect uh, from the team in Kigali. It's an honor. I think uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're obviously preparing hard every day. This is my first day, so we'll get better. More chemistry will build and grow as each day, and hopefully we can win some games. Uh, personally, I think it's a perfect opportunity for me. Um, coming off an of injury and uh, being in the G League for two years, it's a great time uh, for me to just show teams, whether it be back home or somewhere overseas, uh, that I'm ready and I'm healthy. And uh, for everyone else on the team, it's the same thing. I think it's a great opportunity for guys in Africa to get exposure um, at the highest level with the NBA being connected. And I think this is just going to be something that will continue to grow in the future and uh, become something really big. There you go. Right. I said it. Ben Uzo, of course, the Tigers. <laughs> yeah. But Tyron, not a lot of Nigerians are familiar with Tyron, yeah. but he's one of the foreign uh, you know, legionnaires uh, uh, that Rivers have uh, brought into, this, into the lineup, into the roster, uh, just to fortify them. Because it's going to be very tough. They're playing yeah, the is. best teams in Africa. Of course. Yeah. It's going to be a tough one. And if you check what has happened to the Rivers, because their preparations have been smooth. Maybe tomorrow yeah. we'll listen to some of the other of players course, talk yeah. about their preparations we'll loads, and yeah. what they had to, you know, deal with even mm. coming into Lagos, the way the time was wasted. Mm. Uh, we're just wishing them all the best as they leave for Kigali today. This afternoon, they will be there. And of course, we'll try to play some scrimmages, some games before they start. Because they didn't have the opportunity to do that mm. in Lakers. Preparations were far from idea. Yeah. Let's put it that way. All right. Uh, quickly, before we go on our break, touch down on uh, what's happening with uh, basketball. Talking mm. about basketball development right. in Africa. I mean, the very first uh, academy has been opened yes. in Lagos. Achieving the feat of these basketball legends by young Africans starts with baby steps. And former National Basketball Association star, Obina Ikizi, seeks to provide that platform by setting up Africa's first basketball academy in Lagos. The academy named Organized Basketball Network serves as a center to profile and groom young talents from the age of 6 to 18 in Africa. It boasts of a standard basketball court with seven rims, a sports medical department, and a studio. The former Washington Wizards and Los Angeles Clippers forward says it's part of its efforts to revamp the continent's basketball. If I studied basketball, organized basketball at an earlier age, at uh, maybe around the age of 10 or something like that, I would have been a much better player earlier. And that was the motivation that led me to start this program early, to give the kids, kids a chance to start the development up, um, process at a much younger age. Basketball stakeholders are delighted with the infrastructure and programs for grassroots development. 70% of the youth in Nigeria are under the age of 30, and so it's really important that we, in, that we engage the youth and that we invest the youth so they can get the skills to take on the responsibilities of the next generation. This is exactly what we thought Nigerian basketball should begin to do. And our national teams are going to be the ultimate beneficiaries. How? Because we are going to take out the issue of cheating. We manage kids, the actual ages that we know, and they rise steadily and they grow into the senior national team program. With the takeoff of the Basketball Academy, young talents can now start dreaming of becoming superstars, not just in the NBA, but other professional leagues in the world. Welcome back from the break. We have a uh, Demola Gumbono. He's here with us this morning on a special public holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good morning, PC. Indeed. Good morning, Tyler. Workers' Day. <laughs> you guys but we're here. Place. Yes, Workers' Day. And uh, happy celebration to um, all our workers uh, yeah. in and around Nigeria. Awesome.
All right, awesome. Yeah, I love that. Okay, feedback mechanism. You guys can talk to us on our Twitter handle. Yes, uh, City's uh, celebration delayed, champion on eyes. Uh, the game between Man mm. United and Liverpool couldn't go on because our fans were protesting, saying that they want the owners to be changed. They don't want the Glazier family anymore. They want them to leave the club for them. And so the protest, I mean, was too much that securities operated could not even protect you know, the field, they went to Old Trafford and disrupted everything. It was an invasion. So, invasion, yeah, invasion nah. of the Old Trafford. And so the game was cancelled. So City will put their celebration on hold. What do you think about what happened yesterday? Could it have been prevented? So tell us on Twitter what you think about that. And of course, tell us about basketball, uh, Basketball League Africa, Nigerian preparations, talking about uh, River Hoopers who are representing the country, are travelling to Kigali today. What can they do? Would they be able to do one or two things to at least get out of that group? Tell us about that. And also... Uh, some of the games over the weekend, Arsenal, yes, they got a win. Chelsea also got a win. And Liverpool and United were waiting for when that game will be played. Tell us about that also on the program. I quickly, we'll touch down on what's going on with the sports federations across the country. We have the latest um, statements coming from the sports ministry is the fact that, well, the AFN committee board will not be constituted simply because they made some changes to what they did on Friday. Remember Friday when they come up with 31 federation boards are, are being dissolved and they set up a caretaker committee. So changes have been made for that caretaker committee. If you can just quickly run through those changes that have been made. Okay, this is what the statement that was released are from the sports ministry saying, following the dissolution of boards of national sports federation by the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development on Friday, 30th April, caretaker committees were put in place to oversee the affairs of the federations pending the elections of new boards and the result of that now engineer Abu Gume and uh, Banji Oladapo were actually appointed to serve in the volleyball and table tennis federation but right now they've made those changes so Abu Gume has been substituted with uh, Professor E.O. Murakio in the volleyball federation Ketika committee while Banji Oladapo has been substituted with barrister Anton Shodi, who was the former president of Nigeria Table Tennis Federation, during his tenure, we saw a whole lot of improvement and development during that time. And also, because of the meeting that they had with the Confederation of African Athletics and World Athletics, they intervened in the whole situation of the African Athletics on the Athletics Federation of Nigeria, whole issues of infighting. Mm -hmm. So because of this, uh, they've announced that they would not have a caretaker committee in this one. They wouldn't, I mean, the board would not be constituted so i don't know what they're going to do with this one maybe they just want peace to reign the track and field athletes will not be taking over maybe the ministry will just be the one that will take over them so what do you make of these uh, little changes that have been done following the friday's constitution of the uh, different boards across the federations i mean it took the intervention of the world um, athletics body you know they had to come down have a meeting with um, the afn and all the um, stakeholders um, involved um, while all this infighting has been going on, we hope that uh, the athletes won't be the ones to suffer for it. Uh, we, we, I mean, the suffering started. The suffering. Uh, what, really. what really is? I mean, Great Britain yeah. winning silver and four by four hundred. I mean, Nigeria could have been there. Well, Zingana as well. Zingana. Yeah. Yesterday, you know, With all this now, we hope that they can put all their, you know, um, squabbles behind them, and then um, the at the athletes themselves, you know, can go on and do what you know they've been preparing to do all this while. So uh, let's see how it goes um, going forward. Mm. Okay. So just leave it at that. We'll see how it goes yeah. going forward, depending on when. The Olympics, I just hope and pray that uh, all these changes will not really affect the athletes. As you said, we've already we've started reaping, you know, re reaping what we're doing. Then the word really is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a very interesting way to put it. <laughs> I hope everything will be settled before the Olympics. Mm. Leaving that and quickly touching on table tennis uh, championship in Abuja. Mm. That's you no. Know, we want to talk about tournaments. We want to talk about competitions for the elite and grassroots no, level. Not, That's our focus because not. we don't want to start talking about you know issues and issues are going on. Mm, Boardroom issues and all of that. And that's that's not exciting at all. Uh, let's uh, talk about something uh, exciting. There's also our uh, table tennis uh, championship. Uh, the fourth edition is upon us. I can see all these kids there. They're excited uh, to play in the junior and cadet uh, categories. And that's what this competition is all about. It's back after a four-year uh, uh, break. And uh, it's going to be hosted uh, in Abuja. Demola, sites, sites like this, tennis, yes. I mean. sites, <laughs> look at them, kids. young kids, sites <laughs> like this, you know, it gladdens my heart to see that uh, they are catching them younger. Yeah. If this can be, you know, spread all over um, um, 
the sporting um, activities we have yeah, you know, all over the country. Table tennis, it would be nice, yeah. not just mm. table tennis, you know. Mm. Uh, we're catching them young, start grooming them. I mean, go to Europe, you can see that um, um, all, all their young talents coming through, there's proper, you know, uh, progression. Uh, progression. Yeah, yeah, you can see where they're coming they from. Go. You see how yes. they start and you, you monitor and, and, and yeah, <laughs> it's, it's uh, something that we've talked about and it's starting to sound like a broken record. <laughs> uh, but, uh, it's good to see that table tennis has been quite consistent it when it comes to it you know, and uh, to, discovering. Yes, uh, kudos to those um, involved and making sure that um, these kids are you know, given a platform to express themselves and uh, hopefully do well for the country as time goes on. All right, then let's take a listen now to uh, the organizers as well as the entity of precedents. Our emphasis this year remains the cadets and the junior categories. Of course, there will still be the uh, thriller from men's and, and uh, women adults. There will also be veteran and uh, mixed games. But our focus has always been the cadets and the junior categories. If you leave table tennis, table tennis will leave you. The importance of this statement is it is very important to advocate for more tournaments and competitions in the country. Currently, the country is lacking in the number of competitions available to, our, to keep our players actively engaged, prepared, and exposed. We, in table tennis, have been one good family, and we are here to support, as a federation, table tennis federation, to support us to continue to do the good thing they are doing in table tennis in Nigeria. In this very edition, through the record I have, you'll be having players all over Nigeria coming into Abuja to showcase their talent, whom we have already positioned the Federation to be on standby, to pull out those ones that will pencil themselves out in their talent. And usually what we do in table tennis is to key them into the pool and begin to usher them out. There you go, as the president of the Nigeria Table Tennis Federation, Ishak Tikon. This edition is going to feature the number one mm -hmm. table tennis Kenneth, player yeah. in, in, the world, in the world, yes. In the KD category. <laughs> Happens to be a Nigerian, so it's fantastic. Musa Mustafa, as well as his brother, brother. Well, so mm -hmm. Mustafa Mustafa, will be playing in this competition. Imagine these guys, these kids, are uh, playing against uh, other players, other young stars, mm. other, you mm. know. It's going to be inspirational for them because they're playing the best in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nigerian. Absolutely. I was reading the story, you know, some time ago about uh, what their dad had done for them. Wow. And then it just reminds me of uh, the Serena sisters as well. You know, their yeah, dad had yeah. a plan. Mm. The same thing goes for these, um, uh, the, we'll their father, the yeah, yeah. their dad as well. You know, he had a plan for them, you know, mm. and look at what, you know, these guys are turning out to be now. So, uh, fantastic news. Uh, inspiration for other young talents as well, you know, all in and around the country. So, uh, good one for uh, the Mustafa brothers. Yeah, uh -huh. I think it's actually uh, worthy of note that if you check the success, most uh, sportsmen and women have recorded over the years, uh, it's usually the appearance that starts the mm, grooming. Mm. So, Absolutely. I mean, when, when, once you know that your, your, your child, you know, okay. is inclined in mm. sports, mm. all you have to do is just support the child support the best way you can. Mm. So maybe because you obviously reap the benefits at the end of Absolutely. the day. Absolutely. Look at the um, young man too from, from Formula One. Uh, of course, the mom is not here in Nigeria. I've forgotten her name now. Former beauty queen. The son yeah. now, uh, yeah, um, Danny. I've forgotten his name now. Yeah, name so well. Oh, yeah, Aluchi, Aluchi, son. Yeah, yes. son. yeah, yeah. In, in the US, yes. In the US, <laughs> start grooming them now, and yeah. sponsors have come around for the young kids as well. So brilliant for you know young talent. Yeah, parental support so so yeah, so kids, important. important uh, yeah, it's it's that. a bit different uh, in this part of the world. Mm. Uh, it's just you know recently the Nigerian parents started to embrace uh, their yes. kids, yes. you know, yes. doing sports. Back then, you know, it was now. You get beaten for going out to play sports. Well, the, the narrative the, has changed. I mean, the, thing is, I mean, the ones that we've seen success over the years happen to be those who their parents were also into sports, into sports so it's yeah. easier to support them. them. The Gabe sisters, you know, that I met, Ifizigbe and her sister, you know, mm. that I met National mm. Sport Festival mm. from Bayasa. Mm. Their mom was a swimmer, so they have two daughters who are also swimmers, and they're making waves, Brilliant. you know, in Nigeria. Brilliant. All right, so that's the table that. tennis. Of course, uh, we will giving, we'll be giving you all the updates on this competition uh, when it starts. Uh, let's get on with the show now and uh, talk about um, the under-15 
promises. La Liga there. promises. NPFL, yes. NPFL, La Liga promises. Mm. We have a champion. Yeah, Katsina. Really? Yeah. How have they done that? <laughs> okay, the bit where he was, it went into penalty. The game ended one all. It goes into penalty and it ended four two. Yeah, four mm. two on penalties. That's how that game ended wow. four two on penalties. So it's a good year for Katsina because I mean, just look at the, how young they are. That's what I love about that this looks young. this competition. Very how important. young they are. Very how young they are being able to come here. Uh, Warrior Wolves is a big team. Mm. So you expect Katina won it the last time, so they retained the championship. So don't be surprised about that. So mm. that game ended one or two and five right. four mm. on penalties. Yes, mm. they're doing something right, so mm. they need to replicate that. This youngster, you know, scoring, you know, that goal, excited about this. Absolutely. Look um, at the smiles on your faces. Uh, <laughs> let's hope they can move on to bigger things. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what is important. So I just love the the, 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 I mean, the story, the success. And I hope that these clubs, these stars, we, we get to see them in the clubs before they travel to Europe or any other place. That's, but that's not the just, essence. That's, that's the essence. essence. This, is, this is under 15. Um, you think in the next uh, couple of years, uh, we should see some of these guys in the in first three team. years, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Three years. There's only one having an 18-year-old, you know, in your real 18-year-old exactly. in your team. And not 18 for 25, mm. you know, real yeah. 18 years. So for yeah, that's, that's why this competition was, uh, was uh, you know, um, brought into place in, in the first, first place. place. All right. So Could that's you touch down on NNL? NNL. Yeah, the most important back. league in Nigeria. <laughs> I mean, the NNL is so, this is always controversy. Um... You know, but you can, you can argue that it's the same for football everywhere in the world. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we have the results, first of all. Mm -hmm. uh, Vandressa, guys, they're, they're back and they, they have a couple of complaints as well, too, already. <laughs> uh, but we'll get to that uh, later on. Cecilia, let's start with Group A1. <laughs> okay, Group A1, you have EFCC and Mighty Jets ended 1 0. NAF and Green Barrett won all. Economy Warriors and Taraba. Taraba did not show up for the game, so it's a walkover for Economy oh. It's just a good one for Economy Warriors. Moving to the next one, B1 Southern Conference. Oshu United and Nilayo Sport Oshu won by Lone Ghost. Stationary Stores and Re. Um, Calabar Rovers, it was mm. one nil. Go round the giant brillas, go round win by also a lone goal. And Delta Force and Ine were united. It was Delta Force winning also by a lone goal. Diamond Dynamo Force and Vandreza. Vandreza lost by a lone goal. Yeah, that's the, the game. That? Um, they, Vandreza thought they scored a, a, a good goal. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? Mm. No, I haven't seen I've it. I've seen I it. Uh, it looked like a good goal, but the referee said uh, otherwise. And, mm. Uh, mm. They're not very happy this morning, safe to say. It happens. And we had um, the match extended way more than the 90 minutes that was... Uh, it know. happens. I've seen that in English Premier League everywhere. Mm. Yeah, it happens. It's, it's got to be justified. Like There's got to be a reason why reason the why game... Was, you know, you maybe know. players falling on the pitch, unnecessary delays, and we've seen that, you know. Okay, I well, I didn't watch the game. I wouldn't really say, but exactly. Diamond Force, you know, lost uh, the one by a lone goal. So, Vandreza, uh, just keep your heads up. Try to score more goals. They can't disallow more than two or three. <laughs> three FC, but I thought they were going to continue where they stopped. But three FC was a draw for them against the AKT United. For B2, the last one, uh, Apex Crane and Godowski in the two or GRTC and Bayesa. GRTC winning by two, goes to one. Crown and Abia comments, Crown winning and Insurance and Gateway. It was 2 1 in that order. Okay, now leaving the Nigerian National League and quickly go to the English Premier League. We're mm. starting with the process. Yes, that's the story uh, from Sunday. We wanted to review all the results that happened, but somehow, what happened? the big game for the weekend was, of course, the what biggest, the, the, the biggest game any time Liverpool and United are playing. They are the most successful clubs in England, so it's go. always a big game. We were waiting for this game. I mean, tune in. I was waiting. Okay, was okay, what's happening? And then we started seeing. First Pictures all, was delayed. Go, delayed. Mm. Yeah. You have security uh, men, you know, at the stadium where you have the players, where you know, trying to protect the players. They have you know. fans everywhere. Okay. You know, those you are know, from the fans. The fans chose, you know, the biggest match, you know, of <laughs> the Premiership, you know, to make their statement count yesterday. Okay. And yes, yeah, sad to see that there was disruptions there and there, and uh, a few uh, bad scenes because I start throwing um, flares. You know, you could have, of course. Um, Somebody got injured severely, he had to be treated, you know, but they chose the biggest game of the calendar year to make their statement known which is, yesterday, which is, what? which is that they want the Glazer family out, okay. that their club is not being run properly, mm. especially uh, the European Super League triggered, you know, all the emotions and his whole fans coming out in their, in their thousands yesterday, and uh, it, it could have gone, you know, haywire, but uh, thankfully the uh, police force had to call in um, other support 
-hmm. and they came in and uh, put everything to to other. I mean, they even went to the hotel of uh, the United uh, players and uh, stopped them from uh, leaving mm -hmm. the hotel. So it was a sad thing to see, but they wanted to make the statement, and they made it count yesterday. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting, making so, it count indeed, uh, Cecilia. It's a shame he had to come to this. Uh, uh, look at that. Uh, eventually, game had to be called off uh, because uh, it couldn't guarantee the safety uh, of the players and everyone around uh, Old Trafford, uh, uh, especially. And uh, that's why we're going to have to wait uh, uh, for another day to see that big match uh, that would have perhaps determined if City. A champions again, but now, like Cecilia says, champagne on ice, on ice uh, for, them, yes. uh, uh, for now. And uh, uh, I don't think uh, Ole Gunnar will be happy because that, means, be that means a fixture pile up for them exactly. as well because they still have matches uh, in, in Europe to, to attend to. And now, saying that uh, this game has been postponed, uh, and I, I wouldn't say they are top. Uh, uh, their second position in the um, It's not secure, yes. No, it, it's it not. is not. So all this fixture pilot for them will not be a good one for Not Alicona. good at all. Not okay. good at all. They, they, had, they had prepared for this game was supposed to be played yesterday. Mm -hmm. Take something away uh, from, from both uh, sides, uh, definitely. Let's listen to the demands of the fans, of course. You're not happy. They want to glaze their family out. There's so much frustration is they've not communicated with the fans for 16 years. And that leads to this kind of anger we've seen on this level. You know, because if you don't communicate with the fans, you're bound to see this. And we've seen it, I think at Arsenal is the team that has the most common with us. Because they're the same, they've wanted their owners gone for a lot of time. Yeah. And it's the same kind of anger, isn't it? It is. It's, it's, it's the lack of communication. It is. And one thing um, I think we need to make clear is a couple of big signings doesn't make this go no, away. No, does it heck? No, we, that's, that's the thing, that's what they'll look to do. They'll look to try and silence certain sides of the fan bases because they do look at it more in the fact that because you haven't had signings, we're going to start voicing our uh, opinions. But it's not It's not about that. You can, start, you can sign Messi, Ronaldo, mm. Neymar, Mbappe, sign them all, but it doesn't mean that we still want you in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the club. Yeah. Well, they haven't in the past, have they? They only think about money, don't they? You know, it's, that's all they're interested in, money. You know, that's, that's their only motivation. They don't care about English football. They don't know the culture. There you go. Apparently. United fans are very, very clear uh, with their demands. Uh, the relationship has not always been great. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a fact. Ever since uh, the Glazers. Uh, yes. you know, so yes. uh, is this, the whole Super League thing is just... Uh, made the situation yes, come to they felt, head. They felt uh, the Glazers mm -hmm. just, you know, of course they are businessmen that they are not as passionate um, to the club as they should be. They are not fans, mm -hmm. you know, they're just there to make money and cash out and uh, of course uh, the fans that wanted more. Mm -hmm. uh, and suffice to say that my you haven't won uh, the league title in over eight years, you know, they've been playing second fiddle. Yes, not, and counting, yeah, yes. Yeah. And it doesn't seem as if it's going to change anytime soon. Of course, if they can get um, Harry Kane or uh, Alan <laughs> as rumors, <laughs> okay. maybe the narrative will change. We need to go on a break, <laughs> Harry Kane. Okay. I don't think so. Uh, we need to go on a break. We'll be back and we'll talk about uh, Inter, Milan. Inter Milan and also Guy Bill getting a hat trick over a team that has been relegated. Welcome back. Time to talk about Gareth Bill. Yes, uh, Gareth Bill, he was in a hat trick against Sheffield. Uh, on Sunday night, yeah. yeah. Okay, that game ended 4-0. Uh, yeah. Sheffield, of course, we know they are relegated. And uh, Gary Bale, we wanted him to display some some of this hat-trick he displayed against Sheffield, against Man City. Though he came from the so bench, sad. but we didn't really see him why, why, why are you in so that Carabao Cup final. But we saw him Gareth against Sheffield. And there's celebrations across Three everywhere. Three great goals. I think that's and what we should has, focus on. The, okay, the, the goals were great. But, 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 but the, the goals I, were great. I but the team, is, is, the team, the team he scored against. against the yeah. team has... They, they, they relegated already. Beat, so these guys are just... We're in front of you, yes. These guys are already on holiday. Sheffield, for instance, are already on holiday. So you can score any spectacular goal against them. If you want to make history now, this is the time to make history if you're playing Sheffield United. I get your point, totally. Well noted. I just feel... Uh, we should just cut uh, Guy Bale some, some slack, slack and yes. uh, you know, uh, you know, praise him, uh, not going overboard with it like it's Thank been you. done. Uh, but what do you make of this performance? I mean, uh, considering your position, yes, mm. uh, these are a side who are relegated already. Talking about um, a terrible, terrible side, one of the worst in Premier League history. Yes, yes, yeah. they've been so poor. That's my team, uh, their coach, yeah, yeah that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But then take nothing away from those goals from uh, Gareth Bale. I mean, the, fo the, fo the first goal, especially when uh, Sergio Rea made that yeah. Yeah, assist. In the box. Yeah, it, you, you could see that he stretched every sign of his, of his um, you know, left leg to reach that ball and mm. you know, just went past uh, 
the goalkeeper. And then the second goal and the third are brilliant, wow. fantastic uh, shots from uh, Gary Bill. Kudos to him because uh, Harry Kane was on the pitch. Couldn't get a goal. Mm. Uh, Gary Bill got a hat trick, so uh, you have to say credit to him. So, and, uh, so the Mala, well uh, Bill is not a player, um, you know. He was um, all those years ago. Mm. Uh, obviously, he's lost, uh, um, you know, pace and mm. injuries mm. and all of that mm. slowed him down. Mm. But his finishing is still top up class, there no doubt. with no the doubt. best. Uh, no we doubt. saw it yesterday. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, the second goal, one v one against the goalkeeper. Mm. Put it in the roof. Yes. Goalkeeper no chance. I mean, Second goal as well. Third goal as well. So Dim breaks stride at all and mm -hmm. uh, fired it past uh, Ramsdale. And so it's finishing the studio. So it just makes me wonder why Jose uh, didn't play him a lot. Okay. Uh, did you see him against Man City? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, fine. So okay, that's, that's, why, that's, that, that's, that's why. Because when you have the, a striker the, who you know his quality and he's not consistent, it's mm. hard for you as a manager but, to but, trust the striker. But Gary yeah. Bale that's, that's, that's the issue. So that trust is not there. Gary so if Bale. you cannot churn in good, I mean, performance good performance, time, yeah. week in, week out, as yes. a star player. Mm. So it's hard for the manager to trust get, you. Totally Sheffield, 17 points from 34 games. Mm. Come mm. on, Tyler. Uh, and, and, and then Gary Can we Bale. go to Scudetto, please? <laughs> All right, then. Yeah, let's, Cecilia is um, obviously um, not, oh, yeah, anyways, let's, not impressed. Let's, yeah, not impressed. Yeah, nah, I'm not the best guy, but watch him the next game, right? See what's going to happen. <laughs> You won't even see him. Yeah, I, I yeah, that's Gary Bale for I, you. I get what you're saying. I guess just I just feel we should just uh, yeah. Anyways, let, let's yeah, go Patrick, to congratulations. Okay, exactly. He's got the match for yeah. second since uh, yeah. uh, 12, 12 years. 2012? 2012? Yes, 2012? yes, it's 2012. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, yeah. Take congratulations. Take about Gary Bale. Never mind what I was talking about this morning. <laughs> let's go to him now. <laughs> let's go to let's go to the real winners. I'm talking about Inter Milan. They waited for this since 2010. Wow. Who won the last? Who would have thought? I thought that Joseph yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. won it for them, and since he left, I mean, Inter Milan had been won. struggling. Most times, they don't even make the Champions League. Yeah. This is why they make the Champions League. I love what um, uh, the coach uh, Antonio Conte, Conte had to say concerning because he says if they had not exited the Champions League, maybe they won't be able to win the Scudetto. Yeah, so yeah. after exiting the Champions, that will focus on winning, so. this, which was really important. So, That's why so. the fans, I mean, they are all celebrating yeah. uh, this morning. Yeah, 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 great point there. Um, Perhaps it was a blessing in disguise yeah. uh, that uh, they lost out in the UEFA Champions League. Absolutely. I mean, because he knows they, they can win it. It's, so yeah, this exactly. is what you can win. So focus on, on what you can win. win. I mean, you have to you have to give credit to Antonio Conte. Uh, this man is a serial winner. He, 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 I mean, former Juve captain, won the um, title as well with Juventus, went yeah. to Chelsea, won them a title, came to Inter, won them the league as well. So uh, kudos to uh, Antonio Conte. And of course, uh, that man, uh, Lukaku and... Lautaro, Martinez, Martinez the yeah. combination have been really, really superb. And of course, uh, a few players in and around uh, the, mid the midfield, um, Ericsson as well. Uh, uh, a great goal over yeah. the weekend. Yeah, over the weekend, you know, yeah. came in as a sub uh, with, with that goal. Beautiful one for uh, Inter Milan. And of course, Lukaku, uh, he has scored the most goals for Inter, 21 goals. Yeah. Had the most assist, 11. The most big chances created as well. The most short on target, and uh, you know, for the 2020, 2020, I mean, brilliant. So, score. you just say he ruled Syria out. Of course, it did. It did. <laughs> MVP. It did. It uh, did. No uh, doubt. Uh, uh, numbers are from uh, Romelu Lukaku. And Lukaku, you know, the bots of jokes, especially from United fans <laughs> last year. <laughs> uh, bad first touch. Mm, uh, mm. Uh, he's uh, overweight. He's too heavy. Yeah, you know, sucks, he uh, had to change his diet on getting to. Um, yeah, he needed to. I think those criticisms actually helped him. He brought him. out the best in him. He of knows course. we know what Lukaku is capable of. Mm. We see, we saw him at Everton. We saw him at Chelsea. Mm. Yeah. When he came mm. to United, he mm. was still the best. That's part of the criticism. If you check, mm. was the highest goal scorer. Scorer. Yeah. scorer. He got the whole lot. But mm. because you had a uh, Martial, who they feel should be the point man. Exactly. I think that's why Lukaku was, you know, really ridiculously and criticized. And don't forget that yes. part also with uh, what's his name, uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Well. Also. I think that you know propelled him as well and gave him ginger to you know go on and do great things great for things. Inter Milan. Anyways, congratulations. Look at the Inter fans, they're all over the city in Milan, uh, blue side of course, uh, enjoying <laughs> your first Scudetto uh, in 11 years. Uh, who would have thought that Inter would go on such a drought, Amazing run, yes. uh, you know, when it comes to winning uh, the uh, Syria and um, yeah, congratulations to them. Uh, look at the, the couple, of course. Uh, are, they co are they a couple? I'm not so sure. <laughs> Who knows if the guy just got lucky? Can they retain the celebrate celebrate title for next season? That should be the question. Now it's uh, going to be tough. I mean, right now, they just want to celebrate. Exactly. There's still four games to play. Just Remember, play, yes. so the season is not even over. No and um, 
And we don't even know whether Anthony Conte will stay on. It's, it's all these clashes with uh, the hierarchy. hierarchy. Uh, Inter, because because of that Super League issue. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, before that. Before that. It's, um, always, it's always like that. It's always that it's way. Always yeah. that way. He's a very you mean? computational mm -hmm. character you know, in terms of signings and all of that. But it's good to see them overcome all of this and and uh, to win the, the first uh, and Inter Milan will be very will be making a very big mistake if they allow Antonio Conte to leave Absolutely. I mean this I is the time to let this man stay let and, him cook you know let him cook, let and, him cook. and let Inter Milan become a force to be reckoned with yeah, we enjoyed the dominance of Inter Milan AC Milan Juventus you know, there was just this rivalry it was sweet at a point I mean, I do, Juventus won league for like how many years in a row? Like, I got tired. Nine in a row. Nine or eight in a row. I got tired of it. So I was really happy when Daniel Kenti came. We know that, yes, there's going to be there's someone, someone to actually, you know. Money, you know so and it's, he did. it's good. It's good. And he has we like, as well. So. We know how competitive it, it is. And, you know, next season, we know Juve will definitely want to retaliate. And Giappello may even leave. And we know Jose Mourinho is out of job. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. having uh, Antonio Conte and Jose Mourinho at Serie A next season, wow. I mean, we'll switch yeah, over. Yeah. That's good TV. <laughs> we'll switch over. I mean, <laughs> something good oh, to really talk about. That celebration continues uh, in, in Milan, the blue side of Milan, where Inter Milan is celebrating yeah. their title. SM now will just be looking because they were right there. Mm -hmm. They were at the top of the league for a long time. Yeah, and they just fell off. But somehow, they just, off. just couldn't. I, I think knew they won't be able to. They won't, they won't be able to. Uh, the period that you had last time was and injured, yes. so I mean, they just slump and injuries then as well. injuries. Yeah. But it's been, a, it's been a decent campaign for yeah. uh, for AC, and um, if they can, you know, uh, make the Champions make, League, yeah, that'll nice. be a very mm. fairly successful for, for them. Uh, season for okay, uh, quickly touch down on uh, Lionel Messi, yeah, Danny. Messi, um, quick one, Barcelona, La Liga looks like, of course, it's always looked that way. Uh, that was going to go down to the wire. Mm. And uh, yesterday, very interesting match. Very, very interesting. Uh, Carlos Valencia. Sula with two goals there. And uh, they could have bungled it. But uh, mm. thankfully, Messi came to the party. Uh, the play. game before before now, uh, Messi, no Messi, no, no, you know, Barcelona. But... Um, well, he was uh, they, when they, when they lost against Granada at home. He That's scored the was, only goal. No, that, was that was terrible. That was terrible. Terrible Man. performance. Was terrible yeah, Messi performance. was there, but they yeah. lost. You know, so, so. That, that's when it could have taken you know the position on top of the to just yeah. go top because they have a game in hand. Right yes. now, they don't have any game in yeah, hand, that, so that they needed the to win this. So that clash against Atletico Madrid is going to be you know a really really tough call. You know, yeah, whoever wins, it. yes, Atletico, Barca, yes, yes, Real, Sevilla. You know, they have tough tough you know encounters there to look out for. But before we just leave the studio, just quickly read two tweets. Noble Flyer Man says that although the fans have 100% uh, reason, reason, genuine is, reason yep. to protest. However, if the Glazers don't get a convincing offer, they won't sell my United. Simple and please uh, tell Aimba to start picking points on the road. <laughs> the pyramids are <laughs> very deadly. Yeah, they, they, need, they know what to do. HK mm. is a US pundit blame the fans. Yeah, mm. so listen to that. The UK pundit blame the club owners mm. for the my United Liverpool uh, fan protest and stadium bridge. You see where this is heading, mm. but I blame the Man United club security for not preempting. Yeah, that was, that was yeah, very the loose bridge. on the party yeah. against we need the to stadium. Go. You yes, actually, James Haruna as well. We got your message as well. Thank you guys for sending it. At Zuri. Thank you for your message. Thank you as well too for. Thank you for having me this morning. Right. Thank you for watching. I'm Cecilia Mogbe. Do have a great day on this special holiday. I am Taya Salam. Enjoy the rest of your day. Catch you again tomorrow. <laughs>